papers, books, magazines, periodicals, cigars, cigarettes. Something to read, mister? Yeah, what do you got? I got click, pick, look, peek, spot, snap, sock. Wait a minute. What's a good detective magazine? True detective, lone detective, smart detective, soul. Smart detective. There's no such thing as a smart detective. Well, hello, Kay. Hi, Mike. Gosh, you're looking wonderful. Two years hasn't slowed you up a bit, has well, it? You've held up pretty well yourself. Oh, well. Same smile, same gusto, same hat. Oh, no, no, it isn't the same hat. It's the way you wear it. I understand you're doing swell on the Denver paper. Success hasn't gone to your head, has it? Mm, no. Well, anyway, on you it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> you're off your beat, aren't you? San Francisco's a long way from here. No, I haven't got any beat. The chief thought that I was smarter than he was. Madam, my card. Michael Shea, private investigator. Mm hmm. Sleeping on your own time now, huh? Yep. Oh, and meeting a much finer class of thugs. Are you out here on a case? Yeah. Anything I could use? No, not unless you're the sporting editor. Guy took a cross country run on his wife. <laughs> Are you checking in or out? Out. Going back on number 10. Oh, that's fine. You wouldn't even have called me. Well, I, I was just going to. When? Well, the train doesn't leave for four minutes. You haven't worked much on your line, have you? Now, listen to me, Never Kay. mind. You'll have plenty of time to think something up. I'm going out on number 10 myself. Oh, you are? Say, that's great. It'll be just like old times. You and I traveling around together. Oh, no. I never got anywhere traveling with you. I always wound up alone. We back there again. You remember that little date with the preacher? All right. I kept you waiting for one hour. Gosh, if a girl really loved it, I guys, waited she could wait through that. a christening, a confirmation, a wedding and a funeral at that church. What do you think of that? It wasn't the same person. Life passed me by if you passed me up. Hey, wait a minute. What about that time we were going to get hitched in Sacramento, huh? What happened then? When I got there, you were falling on your face. After waiting for three buses in the wind and the cold and the rain, I take just a little teeny nip so that you won't be a widow before you're a bride. And where were you? Could I help it if that Bennett scandal broke? What could I do? Desert my city editor? Yeah. After 200 newsboys and a rewrite man and that big-hearted boss of yours, I come first. Oh, all right. I'm to blame. I'm always to I blame. I didn't say that. Oh, uh, Come on, let, let's let bygones be that way, huh? Oh, sure, Mike. We're still pals. Say, uh, it's getting a little bit late. Let's get going. No, you go ahead and I'll see you on the train. Oh, all right. Hope you have a comfortable trip. Thank you. Would you like another blanket, madam? No, thank you. Can I bring you a glass of water? No, thank you. Is there enough air in here for you? Yes, everything's fine. Now, if there's anything else you want, don't hesitate to give me a buzz. All right. You might push that button out there before barging in. You almost scared me out of my shoes. Now, look, Helen, you're not on any excursion. You put that robe and wig back on. Can't I have a little comfort in my own room? Nobody's going to see me. Well, okay, but if that buzzer rings, you're too sick to see anybody now. You understand? Say, um, how about bringing me a drink? Not a chance. No, I can't be seen with you, so I'm not coming back. But I want you sober when we reach San Francisco. Well, who said anything about getting drunk? No, just... Forget it. Keep out of sight. I don't want any more trouble with you. Listen, Mr. Shane, where do you get off keeping me cooped up like this? Can't have a drink, nobody to talk to. I told you to testify for Callahan. What more do you want? I want to be sure that you'll be able to. You get it? What's going to stop me? Now, listen, sister. There are lots of people who would love to see Callahan burn. You're the one person who can disappoint them if you get there. Wouldn't it be safer if you put me in the baggage car in a mail sack? All right, you just take it easy and relax. I could relax a lot easier with a drink. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. How do they expect a man to bring a train in on the schedule of the worn-out old hog like that? What's the difference? Her lamb's run anyway. If I was being pensioned off, believe me, I wouldn't worry about getting her in on time. No, you wouldn't, eh? With the boys waiting at the beacon point with a brass band, and Harrigan going to give me a watch? How am I going to look? 
coming in late on the last run. They'll wait for you. Not if I can help it, they won't. I'll bring her in on time if I have to bust the living heart out of her. Sorry I'm late, Kay. Oh, that's all right. I haven't been waiting long. <laughs> Got your ticket? Yes. Come on. Hey, McGowan. You gotta hold up for a while. Why? Just got orders from the division manager to wait for Troutwine. He's on his way. I tell you, somebody is trying to frame me. Oh. When they're doing everything to keep me from coming in on time. Oh, keep their pants on. He'll be here in a minute. That big ape. I lived away over in West Colfax. He'll be lucky to find the station. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Got a match, Trout? Hey, your laundry's showing. <laughs> there he comes. General me with the old lady when the chief phones and says, uh, grab number 10 Western Rider. I'll wire the dope as soon as I get it straight. Just like that. There's something up, but I'm hanged to find out what it is. That's nothing unusual for a railroad dick. Now, if I see anything that looks suspicious like a murder or something, I'll report to you. Thanks. <laughs> Well, you never liked me when I did. That's what you think. Well, I wonder if they got any griddle cakes. Hey, remember that time at Jack's when I ate 22 and you got sick watching me? <laughs> <laughs> you remember the time we went to the picnic and you got your hand caught in the olive bottle? <laughs> hey, those were the days, weren't they? We certainly had a lot of fun. Mine, Trudy? Look, uh, but there's lots of empty tables. Why pick on us? Don't mind him, Tom. Sit down. Oh. This is oh. Mr. Linscott, Mr. Shea. Mr. Linscott? Uh, Linscott. How do you do, Mr. Shea? Not as well as I thought. I beg your pardon? Don't pay any attention to him. He gets dizzy riding back. Mm. Mr. Linscott is my fiance. No, it's not. Well, we, uh, you mean... Yes, uh, we're going to get married. Get it? Oh. Congratulations. Thanks. Wish you all the luck in the world. <laughs> don't take it so hard. Hmm? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm the one that ought to be congratulated. What do you mean? Ah, oh, be careful what you say, Mike. Tom's a lawyer. He can make a case out of anything. Oh, Linscott. You're not the legal brains of the Wentworth Enterprises in San Francisco. Well, I work for them. That's the Wentworth that's running for governor. The very same, yes. Well, you'll be in a pretty spot if he's elected. Oh, I don't know. You'll have to invite me to the inaugural ball when you're Mrs. Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> well, of course, Mike. It wouldn't be complete without you. But watch the silver. <laughs> Oh, 
just missed the train. Where's the conductor? Two cars forward. Okay, thanks. Anything else I can do for you, sir? No. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Does you want your birth meet up now, sir? Oh, well, I, I'll be going to dinner in a few minutes, and you can do it then. Don't forget to change your time before we get to Ogden, or you'll get all mixed up. Oh, yes. What time do we get there? At 6.30 tomorrow morning. That's mountain time. Uh, you change your watch back one hour. We're about 40 minutes late now. That'll make about 40 minutes less the hour, if we don't make up 20 minutes. In that case, we'll get there. Let's see. We'll do that at 6.30. We're more than likely to make up all that time and get there at... Uh, 6.30. Thank you very much. Yes, I just got on, caught the train at Avondale. Is there a berth available? Yes, I have a lower in the car behind, number five. Oh, just a minute. Is there a man named Michael Shane aboard? I think there is. Yes, he's in compartment B, car 38. He's an old friend of mine. Is he traveling with anyone? No, sir. Do you have a Helen Carlson? She's sort of a platinum blonde, pretty good looking. No. No Helen Carlson. There's a tall blonde in upper two car 40, the brakeman's wife. But she's far from a good looker. <laughs> it's not important. She must have missed the train. Here's the San Francisco paper you asked for, sir. It just came on board. Oh, thanks. Say, I wonder what that means. You don't think that has anything to do with Wentworth in the election, do you? I don't see how it could. He's only running for governor. It must be the present administration. Mm -hmm. Do you mind telling me what's in my paper? <laughs> oh, sorry. Seems that my boss had a good tip. Looks like the surprise witness in the Callahan case going to blast things wide open. That's true. Say, I wonder where they hid that witness during the trial. Well, it's not unusual for a defense counsel to pull something spectacular at the last minute. That's true. Hey, get this. Here's a guy who's got 26 kids. He must have been driven stork mad. <laughs> That's very funny. Say, Mike, when you were a cop in San Francisco, didn't you pinch Callahan once? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for robbery. He stuck up a gas station. He got four years. He's got a wife and a couple of kids, hasn't he? I don't know. I haven't seen him since he got out. Why are you so interested? My editor wants a feature story. It's a woman's angle. Oh, tear gas, huh? I've got to whip up some stuff in his background, you know. Poor environment, never had a chance. That's the trouble with these sob sisters. They take some hoodlum that'd blow your brains out for a quarter and make a hero out of them. I'm not interested in this mug, Callahan. I'm interested in Kay Bentley. Don't you ever get tired of her? Well, I didn't do so bad two years ago when I started the ball rolling that got Taggart acquitted of the Globe Diamond robbery, did I? Yeah, I'll say you did. <laughs> and when he came to your office to thank you, he walked out with your purse. <laughs> oh, there wasn't much in it. So what kind of a chance do you think Callahan has? Oh, about as much chance as a snowball in a red-hot stove. They got them cold this time. Mike, when I interview him, will it be all right to mention your name? Yeah, sure. If you want to learn some new words. <laughs> Shall we go? Why not? If you don't mind, I think I'll stay and have a little more coffee. Of course. It's been nice meeting any friend of Kay's. Yeah, it's been nice. These are yours, dear. Oh, thanks. Dear. Looks more like a milk to me. Hey, Myers, anything there for me? Not a thing, Trout. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. There's something phony on this train, and she's keeping it a secret. Anything could happen right under my nose. Well, there's room enough. Ha <laughs> ha! 
I won't be more than a minute, sir. Yes, well, I'll wait in the smoker. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you want? Nothing. It was an accident. I hope you'll excuse me. I, I'm sorry. I've had a couple of drinks. Oh, wait a minute, mister. Have you got a match? Yes. I hate waiting for these porters. Mind closing the door? You sick? No, why? You look kind of pale. Maybe it's the binge. I'm not really drunk. I've only had two sidecars. Some guys get all the luck. Well, I'll... Uh... Guess I'll get along. Stick around a minute. There's no charge. Oh, but I... Wife along? No, thanks. I, uh, well, I mean, the way I broke in here... Uh... You don't have to be afraid of me, mister. All I want's a drink, if you could spare one. Well, I... I hate to ask for it, but I'm in the dumps. I'll send one in. I, uh, don't like to drink alone. Well, I'll bring something right away. Is there anything else you want, Miss? Nothing. Yes, sir. There we are. I'm going to my compartment to get a cigar. Uh. Mr. Linscott? Yes? I'm Carl Izzard. I'm working on a little job for Caleb Wentworth. I see. Special detective, huh? What do you want with me? I'm in kind of a jam, and I need your help. What for? There's a woman on this train who could blow the Callahan case wide open. Say, so what are you driving at? Just this. It's very important that she doesn't get to San Francisco to testify. Say, I don't get it. What has the Callahan case got to do with Wentworth? You kidding? I know. And you can get that dope from Wentworth. But right now, what I want you to do is this. You're engaged to Kay Bentley. Now, she and Mike Shane used to be pretty good friends. Now, never mind that. I'm afraid you'll have to mind it. Because I want her to talk to Shane and find out where this woman is, understand? Well, listen, I don't know what this is all about, and frankly, I just as soon forget it. If you'll excuse me. Now, listen, wise guy. I didn't want to tell you this, but you might as well know. Callahan is innocent, and this woman can prove it. What? That's right. You mean that they're railroading an innocent man? You catch on quick. But why? Listen, you know as well as I do that Wentworth's company is under investigation. So, if Wentworth isn't elected governor, he'll have a new office in San Quentin, and you may be with him. Think it over. Mike Shane is in car 38, compartment B. Hey, it didn't take you long. Oh, the club car's right in back. What Santa Claus got there? Uh, this is the only way it comes. Midgets. Yes, they don't sell it in big bottles. Well, as long as there's enough of them. Uh, do you think I should get some more? Oh, no, I was just kidding. Oh. Well, glasses and everything. 
Buffy, in case I forget to tell you, you're a lifesaver. Oh, is it that bad? Almost. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Say when. You don't have to with those. Oh, of course. I've never seen these little bottles before. I, I, I don't like to spoil good liquor. Well? Uh, no toast. I don't know any. You're evidently not a drinking man. Oh, I take one now and then. Sit down. Thanks. Cigarette? Why, I'll smoke one of these, if you don't mind cigars. Only at a smoker. Some ladies don't like them. <laughs> oh, isn't the liquor all right? Oh, it couldn't be better. Huh. And when that suitcase busted open, it just spattered money. Must have been twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars. Maybe thirty. Mm -hmm. He must be one of them Wall Street typhoons. From the way that money flew, he's the whole hurricane. <laughs> The end of a perfect day. Oh, I, uh, I'll go when I finish this. Oh, I didn't mean for you to scram. What's the rush? Well, I, I really haven't any place to go. And sit still, silly. You're a funny duck. What's your name? Jason. Uh, Everett Jason. Sounds like a school teacher or a doctor. I'm in the dry goods business. Dry goods? And me with a permanent thirst. Oh. Sorry. What do they call you for short? I, I've never been called anything for short. If... Jay... How's Jace? I'm fine. <laughs> well, Jace, down the hatch. Same to you. Uh, mind if I sit down? Oh, no, of course not. Smoke? No, thanks. Wrong vice. Occasionally a little work back there. She's so interested in her job, I didn't want to disturb her. Yeah. Yeah, she used to make me believe that. You know, Mr. Shane, I get worried about that girl sometimes. How so? All the chances she takes. Oh, she's just naturally impulsive. Don't take her too seriously. <laughs> You know, she told me she heard the secret witness for the Callahan case is aboard. She's determined to find out. Is that so? Yeah. If I thought the witness was on this train, I wouldn't let Kay out of my sight. Oh, let her look. Give her some exercise. I think I'll grab a breath of fresh air before I turn in. What would you do if you had your choice of anything in the world? Money, no objection. I think I'd go away where there's a lot of sun and water and no cops. You mean, uh, like a tropical island? It's a good idea. Why not? Oh, tropics is no place for white women. A lot of malaria. Well, where would you go? I'm going to South America. South America? Yep. They've got everything there. Climate perfect all year round. And scenery magnificent. Who is this? Oh, oh come in. Okay, I... Uh... I'll be with you in a minute. Hmm? I ran into a story for you, a front page story. Well, let's have it. You've been curious to know why Mike Shane is going to San Francisco, haven't you? Yes. According to a friend I just met, Shane is hiding a woman somewhere on this train. A woman? Mm -hmm. Oh, now, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. Oh, would it if the woman was a surprise witness for Callahan? We can't. Who is she? I think her name is uh, Helen Carlson. Surprise witness, eh? And he hasn't seen Callahan in years. Why, that lying flatfoot. Say, are you sure about this? It was told to me in strict confidence. I wouldn't want my name mentioned. Well, okay, I'll check it myself. Oh, oh I have my own little ways and means committed. What's the matter? Oh, nothing.
about wine. I guess that's the one he was looking for. You see him, tell him I've got it. All right. That's right. And Leander said it was fifty or maybe sixty thousand dollars. Wow! He must have won the pot of gold. He must have won gold or silver or something. Oh, just a minute, please. Get in there. All right, now be quiet. <clears throat> what, Kay? Oh, is, is this yourself? What, no. You see, I was just waiting here until they made up my berth. Well, I met a girlfriend. She said she was in this car. I was looking for her. You've got a nice, clear night for her. Uh, I'm... I'm sure she said drawing room A. Oh, I did see a tall, dark girl with uh, rather full of brush eyelashes right down by the water cooler. Oh, no, there. no, this one's sort of blonde. She's an old schoolmate of mine, grammar school. I haven't seen any old girls. Well, she's not old, about my age. And still going to grammar school, my. She must be rather mentally round-shouldered. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen a drawing room before. Uh, this, uh, this room's a little larger than mine. Yeah, is it? Mm. Yes, they say that some are larger and some are smaller. I guess it's because of the size, eh? <laughs> you, uh, you might invite me to sit down. Oh, sure, go ahead, sit down. Take a load off your arches. Thanks. Oh, you can leave the door open. Oh, no, no. That isn't necessary. I trust you. <laughs> Say, you know, that guy you're engaged to is pretty smooth. Yes, isn't he? I never thought you'd go for a guy like that. You always picked him kind of, you know, rowdy. The kind that you meet in your racket, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no. I'll oh, it's all right. I can no, get it. No, I'll get oh, no, the really, water. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Well, all right, if you insist. <clears throat> I... I feel better. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's... Say, look, uh... Let's go up the club car. Oh, hmm? no, this is fun here. Oh, well, they've got a nice radio up there. Oh, radios never work on trains. Come on, stay here. Won't you pay it up now, sir? What? I... I told you to make it up before. Uh, no, sir, you didn't tell me. You were... I ain't seen you since you got on. All right, then. It must have been your brother. I ain't got no brother. All right, then. Forget about it. Make it up later. Yes, sir. Slipping, Mike. You used to be able to cover up much better than that. Cover up? Well, I... Skip it. Say, so what's the number of this car? 38. 38? Oh, 
I thought it was 28. Now, isn't that stupid? Yeah. I'll go find 28. Excuse me. I'll be anxious to know if you find your friend. Oh, I'll find her. You know, there isn't any car 28 on this train. Or maybe you were thinking of two other trains, huh? something for a headache? Uh, no, ma'am, but I'll try to get you something. Thank you. like a dog got me down. You know, I bet that's hard to do, isn't it? Oh. Put a torch in your hand and you could pass for the Statue of Liberty. Go on, enjoy yourself. I bet you pulled wings off of flies when you were a kid. All right, you don't like me, huh? I'll get your fiance. Oh, no, Mike, please. Please help me down. Look, there's a key. I don't see any key. It's right there on the floor next to your foot. Oh, you mean this thing, huh? Yes. What were you doing up there, looking for mice? Uh, yes, I... No, I... I just wanted to find out how the birds went up in town. Oh, studying to become a porter, huh? <laughs> oh, that won't fit. Oh, you've got the wrong end, stupid. But it owed it two ends, huh? Isn't that clever? Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you poor kitty. Uh, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Are you sure you're all right? Sure, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, you ought to get angry more often. It makes you spark. Oh, let go of me. Oh, was I holding you? I didn't realize it, honestly. Oh, Mike, why don't you come out in the open in whatever you're doing? What are you talking about? I happen to know that you're hiding someone on this train. Who told you that? Never mind, I happen to know. You know, Kay, I think you're a pretty swell dish. I'd hate to see you get into something that you couldn't get out of. I can take care of myself. Well, all right. I didn't think you'd be dumb enough to put yourself in a spot for the wrong people. And who are you to judge? Oh, so you are covering someone, huh? I didn't say that. You didn't have to. No, wait a minute. I think you dropped this in front of my room. See, you still don't cross your T's. That's a very bad habit. You ought to... Place. Won't you get kind of lonesome down there? Oh, no, I won't have a chance to. I, I've made some contacts and I'm going to open a dry goods store. Anyway, I'll be too busy getting settled and learning the language. Aren't you coming back? No, intend to. Must be wonderful to start over with a clean slate. I always wish I could. Who is it? 
Mike Shane. Just a minute. What took you so long? Who was long? Where'd you get the liquor? They still have porters on these trains. Now look, Helen. I told you that there might be someone who would stop at nothing to keep you from getting to San Francisco. Yeah, you told me. Well, I just found out that there is, and right on this train. Now it's up to me to see that you get there safely. I'll get there. I sneaked you in here on a stretcher. I'd hate to see you have to leave the same way on the level. You're not scaring me. I'm not trying to. But you're going to go through with this. I don't want to get tough, but if I have to, I will. All right, what's it going to be? You're going to play ball or not? Why should I? I've got nothing to gain. Honey, a man's life is at stake. If you can't figure it out any other way, all right. Chalk it off to what you owe to society. Yeah. But what society did for me, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now you lay low and keep this door locked. Be a good girl now. Hmm? You heard, didn't you? Yes, Alan. Well, it's been swell meeting you. You don't have to stall about going. It's okay. I'm not going. Unless you want me to. Why don't you tell me what it's all about? Maybe I can help you. You couldn't help. How can you know unless... Oh, it's no use, Jace. It may seem useless to you, but somehow I have a feeling I can help you. You'll only trust me. Well, it isn't that I don't trust you, but... Then tell me. Okay. But remember, you asked for it. It all started when I was in the chorus of a second-rate musical show in Frisco. Met a lot of party boys. You know how it is when you're in a show. One night, a miracle happened. I met the right guy. He loaded me down with furs, clothes, and jewels. She was thoughtful. When the police broke in, I found out the stuff was hot. True Blue Herald took it on the lamb, and I took it on the chin. One to five. Did a year and got out on parole. It's pretty tough going. Yes, I guess it would be. One night, a friend introduced me to a real nice kid. He took me to what turned out to be a gambling joint run by Jeff Alton. Kid got drunk and bragged he was going to break the house. In an hour, they had his bankroll. Barges into Alton's office and accuses him of needling the wheel. It's an argument. Kid grabs Alton's gun and lets him have it. We duck and... The kid gives me some dough and tells me to get out of the state. I told him it violated my parole. He asked me how I'd like to serve the rest of my term. His dad was a big shot, Caleb Wentworth, running for governor. I was scared and confused, so I beat it to Denver. Then the Bulls picked up a guy by the name of Callahan and pinned the murder on him. And this flat-foot Shane shows up in Denver and says either I testify or he'll tell off the parole board. So, here I am. That's funny. Yeah. Very funny. Well, it's been nice knowing you. No, no, I didn't mean it that way. You don't have to believe it. But I do. 
Every word of it. And I understand, Alan. Because I'm in a mess the same as you are. What do you mean? The cops after you? No, not that. What then? Well, it may sound crazy to you, but I'm running away from the very thing you're searching for. What's that? Security and peace. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I know it does. I've lived my whole life back there in Avondale, where mother and father were born there. I always had everything done for me. I was never allowed to make a decision in my whole life. When I graduated from college, my family had a wife picked out for me. She took up where they left off. Well, I don't mean she was bossy or nagging, but I just couldn't go on that way any longer. I had to get away to find out if I could really think for myself. talk with Shane. The either knows what she's trying to find out or Helen Carlson isn't on the train. So we're back where we started, eh? There are other means of Shane getting her to San Francisco. We got them all covered. Now look, this is my biggest chance for important dough and I'm not blowing it. That day mustn't get to San Francisco. Well, I wish you luck. You're not out of it yet, Mr. Linsky. I may need your help. Well, how can I help? I might have to arrange an accident. Now, wait a minute. You can't do that. Why not? I don't want any part of it. Huh. You got nothing to say about it. Just listen to me and get what I tell you straight. My wife's a good woman, Helen. Too good. But I've been just a shadow to her. That's why I'm going to South America. You think you'll find what you're looking for there? I know I will. Helen, we've only just met but there's something about you that makes me feel I've known you for a long time. That's the only reason I can come out and ask you this. Why don't you come along with me? You don't mean that. It's the liquor talking. No, it isn't. You don't want to go back and testify. You'll be risking your life. Look, I've got $10,000 in my compartment. It's all mine. I've saved it. I've left my wife well provided for. We can get off at the next stop and catch another train. It's crazy. No, it isn't. Don't you see? We've got a chance to get something out of life. It doesn't seem real, Jace. Things like this, just, they just can't happen. They can if we'll only let them. We'll be far away from people we know why it'll be like, like starting all over again. I don't know, Jace. I don't know. I'm telling you, I got it straight from Leander. He told you that? Well, he didn't exactly tell me, but George told me that Henry told him that Leander seen it with his own eyes. Is that so? His suitcase was just a busting with money. No clothes, just greenback. There's at least a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Why don't you boys stop lying to each other? I ain't lying. It's a fact. We got the richest man in the world on board. Who's that? I don't know, but he's toting around a half a million dollars in a suitcase. In a suitcase? Where? Up in Leon Jones' car. So that's it. I got a chance to make up some time. Now get off the lead, boy, before I pass my foot in the seat of your pants. What's the matter with you? She's red in a fireman's shirt. I don't want Fight! Do you hear me? This is it. Let's see if he's in. Take a look. He ain't in. This it? Yes. Mr. McCoy, all right. This guy's making quite a haul. 
I just hope she ain't trained the wrong possum. Now, get this, Leander. This man's an embezzler sure as shooting. I want you to keep your eyes open for him. If he tries to get off the train, stop him. I'll be waiting here. Yes, sir, but just because a man carries a lot of cash, you don't make it necessarily so. You're under orders. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. The old fool's driving that hog like a madman. Made up 30 minutes since we left Laramie. Well, I was up there. Yeah, what did he say? He said if you don't like the speed he's running the street next, you can get off and walk. Oh, he did, huh? When we get to Division Point, I'll make a speech or two. That is, if we get there. Come in. Good evening, Mr. Shane. My name is Carl Izzard. How'd you know? I don't know. You just look like a guy who'd have a name like Izzard. <laughs> All right, what's on your mind? Mr. Shane, you and I have plenty in common. Is that so? Yeah. Mm, mind if I sit down? No, no, go ahead, sit down. I don't think. Maybe I don't have to tell you this, but I'm on the biggest job that ever hit my office. If I crack it, I can write my own check. I'm very impressed. Well, I believe in being frank. This job's too tough for me to handle alone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on a vacation. Wouldn't want to combine a little business with it. What kind of business? Profitable. How profitable? 2500 It's That's a lot of money. Now, all you've got to do is introduce me to a certain young lady. Ah, it's just my luck. I don't know any young lady. You don't? No. Not for three grand? No. On the line? Mm -hmm. Well, would you know any young ladies for, say, 3500 I'm sorry. How much are you getting for the Carlson job? Ask the quiz, kids. After Wentworth's elected governor, maybe they'd be head of the state police department. Oh, no thanks, no. You see, there's so much responsibility, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. no. You're a hard man to do business with. Not always. Come on, Shane, let's stop clowning. Every man has his price. What's yours? What do you think? I think five grand, and that's tops. Well, you're all wrong. Now, go on. Get out of here. You're a chump, Shane. Yeah. This opportunity won't knock again. It's too bad for me, isn't it? Where's the girl? Now, come on, quit the stalling. Now, listen. Fire that gun and that the whole train's gonna come piling in here. Yeah? It'll be pretty hard to hear a shot when you go by a crossing or another train comes by. So you better change your mind, because one's liable to come along any minute. Aren't you afraid you're gonna have a little trouble finding that girl without my help? I'll take that chance. Doctor, there's a girl here. She's unconscious. I'll try one of the other cars. Say, maybe I can help. Oh, thanks. I'll be right back. This goes out like a light. Get a wet towel, quick. Hey, 
Is anybody here a doctor? No. no. Hey, what happened? Use the cab of that truck we hit to get him into Kingsley at three miles west. And phone division point and have them send an engine and a wrecking crew to haul it. Nice mess that old fool got us into. Oh, yeah? Only guy can stick to his engine like he did is okay in my book. Mike! Boy, I must be in the wrong car. What's the matter with her? I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Take it easy, honey. You'll be all right. Mm. Say, I think you two better get out of here. I can take care of her better alone. Oh, but look, maybe oh, I can Oh, come on, Mike, the... please. Say, uh, that girl may need a doctor. I'll try and find one. Hmm? That's a good idea. Hey! Somebody come in here! Anybody out there? Help! Help! Good gracious of me. What's the matter, sir? Come on, hurry up and untie me. Mm -hmm. You sure is snared up pretty. Yeah. I was hanging up my overcoat when the crash came and got twisted in the belt. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I never would have believed it. Come on, hurry up. Ooh. What happened? A little accident. You've got a bad bump. I must have taken a swell header, all right. Ooh, I passed out cold. Where's Jace? Who? The man who was in here with me, is he all right? Oh. Oh, yes, yes, he went out to find a doctor. Don't get a doctor. Don't get anybody. Are you Helen Carlson? No. No, I'm not. Mike Shane's taking you to San Francisco on the Callahan case, isn't he? Who are you? Oh, it's all right. You can trust me. Yeah. It's the same kind of a line Shane handed me. Sure, I know all about Shane. He'd do anything to get in the limelight. Here, you better take it easy. How did you know who I was? Why, I heard someone talking on the train. And Shane was right. There are people. I really want to help you. Please believe me. I guess it wouldn't do me any good not to. That is, if you really want to help. Well, what can I do? Tell me. Keep Jace out of sight. He'll be back here and if Shane finds him... He won't. How do you know? He was in here right after Jace left and I got rid of him. Oh, thanks. Thanks terribly. That looked like the girl? Yes, that's her, all right. You know, I figured she was Helen Carlson when Shane came into the room. I'll take care of her right away. Now, wait a minute. I think this Carlson girl would jump at some real money. Let me try it first, huh? All right. But work fast. And look out for Shane. He's no fool. Right. It's funny I never met anybody like Chase before. First, I was kind of amused at him. After a while, I, I got to understand him. I really like him. He seems to think I'm okay, too. He wants me to go to South America with him. Well, why don't you? Well, do you think it'll be all right? Well, why not? I couldn't find a doctor. Uh, oh, it's all right, Jace. This is Kay Bentley. She knows all about everything. I told her. Who is it? Oh. Kay, I've got to talk to that girl. You can't, Tom. Not now. But you've got to let me speak to her, Kay. It's important. Everything depends on it. Everything? Oh, yes, everything. Believe me. My career, our future. You can leave me out of it. What? Tom, why did you fake that story of a friend telling you about Helen Carlson? Well, I had to find out where the girl was. Then why didn't you come to me on the level? Oh, now, wait a minute, you Kate. You are willing to use my friendship with Michael Shane. Be reasonable, will you? Here. This should be good for a down payment on your next romance. But, Kay... Who was that? Huh? Oh, just a guy who was and isn't anymore. Say, are you catching your boat out of San Francisco? 
Yes? Something tells me it isn't healthy for you to hang around here. I'm going out and find a way to get you there. Jace, I don't want you to get mixed up I'll in this. I'll get my things. Be right back. But, Jace... I'll lock the door. Mr. Traubein, Mr. Traubein. What's the matter? That man you look for, that investor, I saw him go into this compartment. Are you sure? What do you think I is, illiterate? No, no, we gotta be careful. You watch that end of the car, I'll stay here. If he tries to get off your end, stop him. Understand? Yes, sir. All right, get up there. Look, I tell you, this is a matter of life and death to me. I've got to be in Ogden before tomorrow morning. I'll make it worth your while. Ogden? Yeah, why, that's over 200 miles. What's the matter? Can't your car make it? Make it? Why, she's as good as the day I bought her. Right. I've nursed her along like a baby for 10 years. Yeah. Why, I just put in new rings last year and ground the valve. Oh, how much? 40 horsepower, and she runs... No, 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 I don't mean that. How much for a fast run to Ogden? Oh, let's see. The, the, there's the gas. That would be about... Uh, uh, and tires. Them tires is the best six-ply. $60. Uh, make it 80 I'll split the difference with you. All right, mister. Okay, here's $20. I'll give you the other 50 when we get to Ogden. All right, but first I gotta drive to my place and get some gas. Oh, wait a minute. Can't you get it around here? Mister, it's after midnight. <laughs> well, all right, but hurry it up, will you? And look, I'll meet you right next to that clump of trees over there. Go on, beat it. Stop him! Stop him! Hey, what is it? No! Thought you could get away with it, huh? Taking advantage! Of a wreck. What's the matter, lady? This I'm... man's a thief. Let go. Now, wait a minute, buddy. Yeah, that... All right. Now, here. This crook stole my diamond pin. Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. I, I just caught him trying to make a getaway. Go on, search him. All right, sure. Go ahead, search me. I got nothing to hide. I don't know what your game is, but I'll find out. That's yours. Sure. Right. Is this it? Yes, that's it, all right. Well, that's a fine thing. And you've got such an honest face, too. Say, now, look, this dame is wacky. She planted that pin in my pocket herself. Uh, that's a fine story. My name is Michael Shane. Here, here's my credentials. I'm a private detective. Sure, sure. I'm the Lone Ranger. Oh, very funny, yes. Well, you better come along with me, mister, so we can check up on you. Well, I tell you, I'm Michael Shane. I'm a, I'm a detective. Oh, yeah? Let's go search his luggage. He's probably got a hat full oh, of stuff. Well, you and I are going to get along. I can yeah, see you. Is that you, Jace? Yes. Yeah. Who are you? What do you want? Now, let's not get excited. I got $5,000 that belongs to you. What do you mean? All you have to do is get off this train. With me. Get out of here. Oh, I know. I had too much trouble getting in here. Now, listen, if I were you. I'm not listening to anybody. Get out! Now, get this straight. It's up to you. Either you take the dough and come with me, or... What happened? Who is he? I don't know. He came in here and threatened me. We better get out of here. This way. Hey, wait a minute. Did you get a car? Yes. We better go around the train. There are too many people on this side. Headed this way. Why didn't you stop him? Not me. Hey, you! Stop! Stop! Stop or I'll shoot! What was that? Sounded like a shot. Oh, oh no, you don't, buddy. Oh, yes, I do, buddy. What happened? The man's an embezzler. I hollered from the stop. He wouldn't. I'm your new customer, mister. But I don't get it. The man it? can't make it. We're going to go to Ogden instead. Come on, hop in. Oh, but he was going to pay me 70 bucks. He still owes me 50. I'll make it 60. Come on, hurry. I... Will you hurry up? Wait a minute. Oh, hey, Gay, Gay, Gay. Hey, but he must be an embezzler. What else would they have sent me for? 
Oh, I forgot. Here's a telegram for you. Well, it's about time. If I hadn't taken things into my own hands, this guy would have been out of the country by now. Seems as if there'd been a mistake somewhere. Ripping right along like a breeze, ain't she? Uh-huh. Hey, uh, what are you gonna do when we get to Ogden? Why? Well, I thought maybe you and me could look around, see the sights, and go to some nice place to eat. That'd be just dandy. I know a place where you can get a table to holy dinner with a choice of three vegetables and your fortune told for 35 cents. I bet the floor show's terrible. Hey, how are you holding up back there? Fine. What's that? Don't know. Just getting her second wind, I guess. Can't imagine what the trouble is. She never acted this way before. At least... Not lately. Ain't that a beautiful set of pipes? Yes, yes, beautiful, but go on and fix it. Well, now, let's see. That could be the carburetor. Then again, it might be the ignition or the water pump. Well, we'll pick out a good one, but let's get going. <gasps> Look, I'm going to go on up to that farmhouse. What for? Well, I, I think I'd better phone my mother. She may have heard about the wreck and she'd be worried. I'll be right back. I'll go with you. No, no, you stay there with Helen. Doggone. Can I help you with that? I don't think so. Looks like the gas line's clogged. Ain't no gas coming through. Is that you, Lulu? What is it this time? Chicken pox or measles? It's not Lulu. It's me. Who? I'm sorry to break in so late at night, but our car broke down. We're on our way to Ogden. I was wondering if I could use your phone. Well, sure. Wait a minute. I come right down. Honey, you're shivering. Here, take my coat. Oh, no, please, Jace. Maybe we can wait in that farmhouse. Good idea. Uh, blow your horn when it's fixed, will you? Okay, mister. Thank you. I'm awfully sorry to disturb you so late at night. Oh, you don't disturb me. <laughs> I thought you were my half-sister. She lives down at peace. And one of the kids always manages this time of the night to develop something. <laughs> oh, didn't I tell you? <laughs> oh. oh. What's the matter? The car will take an hour to fix. We thought maybe we could warm up inside. Oh, sure. Come right in. Oh, I am tickled to death to have callers. I rarely see anybody except the neighbors, and they are mostly my relatives, some kind or other. But you must be frozen. Going out this time tonight, it's no cold or anything. Well, you see, uh, uh, they're eloping. Eloping? Oh, oh how romantic. <laughs> it takes me back to the time when I wanted Hiram to elope with me. But he wouldn't. He was afraid of my pa. <laughs> you better come in the dining room. It's very Oh, excuse woman. me. Uh, where's the telephone? Over there. Oh, and I left a little fire last night. So we put a little wood on it. Now, you see how warm it is? And I'm going to fix that fire. Hello. Hello, operator. Give me long distance, please. I'm going to make you some nice fresh tea. Oh, please don't bother. No, oh, it's not trouble at all. It will take me only a minute. Make yourself at home. You see, I will be right back. It don't take so long to make some tea. Hello, long distance. I want to put in a call to the Denver Tribune. Yes, in Denver, that's right. Thanks a lot, Chief. Where'd they go? Oh, it's you. You see, it was this way, mister. I was waiting there for you. Then that girl oh, came never along. Never mind about that. Where did they go? Oh, in that farmhouse. Hey, wait a minute. I owe you $20. A lunatic. No, I tell you, I have Helen Carlson with me right now. Yes, yes, that's right. I'm taking her to San Francisco as a surprise witness on the Callahan case. I practically lifted her from under the snoot of a dumb dick. 
Yeah. The story's the trip's body and soul. Hey, and wait a minute. Tell that hatchet puss Mitchell I want a bonus. Hello, Tits. Well, what are you doing here? I'm the pest control man. Where's that girl? It's crazy. But what it girl? Don't you see? We've got a chance to get something out of life. Jane. Hey. What's he got to do with all this? He's got nothing to do with it. I, I just met him on the train. All right, then you better tell him goodbye. Come on, we're going. She's not going with you. Did you tell him why I'm taking you to San Francisco? Yes. Why don't you give her a break, Mike? All right, now you just stay out of this. You big lug tossing that poor kid around. She's down and you're going to give her the last kick. Smearing a name across the headlines and all for a big fee from a small town hoodlum. And just what were your plans? I'm going to help them. Oh, big hearted Hannah. That's the truth. <laughs> Baby, I've seen you pull some fast ones in your day, but this is the best yet. Do you know who this campfire girl really is? All I know is she's been on the level with us. She helped us off the train and got a car. Well, maybe you should have done a little research work before you became so friendly. She's a reporter on the Denver Tribune. He's crazy. All you are is hot copy to her. It's your dollars, headlines, circulation. I don't believe it. All right, call up the long distance operator if you want to find out for yourself. I call my mother. Since when is your mother the night editor on the Denver Tribune? Well, you ready to go now? I said she's not going with you. Why should she risk everything for some ex-convict who's probably getting just what's coming to him? I don't think Helen told you everything. What do you mean? That someone else deserves a break just as much as she does. Callahan. I know he was in the pen once for robbery because I put him there. But he served this time. Since he got out, things have been pretty tough. But he's been going straight, that I know. There won't be any smart lawyers to defend him because he hasn't a dime. I got into this thing on account of his wife and kids. I want to see them get a break. Nothing you say is going to stop us. Come on, Helen. Now, wait a minute, bud. Get out of my way. No, I'm sorry, but she's not going to leave. I said, get out of my way. And I put that thing down, you don't realize what you're getting into. I mean it, Shane. Come on, give me that gun. Jace, he's right. I've got to go back and clear Callahan. I've tried to run away from trouble lots of times, but I never could make it. No matter where I'd go, it'd always be after me. And I'd be dragging you along. You'd be worried and not happy. Not really happy. Oh, yes, I would. Listen, honey. I want you to go back to Avondale. Helen. I mean it, Jace. Oh, it'll always be part of you. Go back to your comfort and security. But our plans, we can't throw them away like that. Sure we can. Because I know it's right. Oh, it won't work. Go on back. It'll be much better than you think. Even your wife will be glad when she finds out you come home to her. Go on, honey. Give her a break. Thanks, Ellen. Well, here I am. You see, it didn't take me very long. Oh, here is another one. Yep. He was waiting in the car. Oh, but you shouldn't have left him. Well, that's what I've always told her. <laughs> <laughs> we better have tea before it gets cold. Oh, well, I'm awfully sorry, but the car's ready and we really should go. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. But I understand. You better run along. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Well, I'm sure you two will be very, very happy. Thank you. I'm sure we will. Is there a bus through here to Avondale? Oh, yes. It will be along the Denver bus pretty soon. But you told me you are going to Ogden. Well, three of us are. Oh, I see. You've been so kind. Good oh, morning. not at all. Goodbye, dear. And come and see me. Let me know how you are getting along. No, we will. <laughs> Goodbye. God bless you all. It was lovely. Goodbye, Helen. Good luck. Goodbye, Jace. I know everything's going to be all right for both of us. I hope so. No regrets. And you won't miss the bus. No.
minor prices, everything's good here. Just like old times eating in a joint like this again. Now I can eat what I like and how I like. Mm -hmm. well, what do you like? Well, I think I'll have the number five, the double hamburger with the relish and the hot ketchup, the ground glass and the melted cheese with plenty of onions. Uh, you have to have those onions? Certainly. Hey, service. Service! I'm going to have the New England dinner, and the young lady will have the number five special with all the trimmings. And plenty of onions. Mm-hmm. Yes, Miss Bentley. Helen. Hello. Well, what, what are you doing? Mike, you didn't... Oh, I forgot to tell you that she was working here. Say, doesn't she look great, huh? You look swell. How do you like it? Fine. I've got a place to hang my wardrobe and all I want to eat. You're doing okay, hmm? Yeah. Getting so good I can balance 20 plates on one arm. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you deserve a gold star after your name for that one. Oh, forget about it. Look, how about you staying on here a couple of days, hmm? We can lose ourselves in the Frisco fog and just kick the town around generally. Oh, Mike, I'd love to, but I've got to get back to Look, Denver. just give me two days. And then if I don't put a ring on your finger, I'll guarantee to put a couple under your eyes, huh? How about it? Okay, I'll sign the lease. That's a girl. We... Oh, look. Uh... Do you have to have those onions, hmm? Oh, Mike, is that all you're worried about? I can't help it. Well, I'll fix that. Ah, oh, it's a pal. Helen! Helen! Helen, would you please cancel those onions? Cancel. Kill them. I'd much rather have garlic. Yeah, give her 